Welcome to the second episode of this podcast series on SAS statistical graphics presented by Amadeus Software. My name is Mark Jones and I work for Amadeus, who are experts in SAS and providers of consultancy, support and training for SAS software. Please visit our website at www.amadeus.co.uk to find out more information on this podcast series as well as the other services that we provide. In the first episode of this podcast series, I introduced you to three of the SAS statistical graphics procedures, namely SGPlot, SGPanel and SGScatter, which we can use to create high quality data visualizations. In the following presentation, I will be introducing you to the SAS Graph Template Language, or GTL, which underpins all of SAS statistical graphics. In addition, we will consider the SGRender procedure, which can be used to create graphs from GTL templates. So what is GTL? Traditional SAS graphics created with procedures like gplot and gchart are what we describe as device-based. Graphs are created as an entry in a catalogue and image files can optionally be created using appropriate g-options and devices. By contrast, SAS statistical graphics are what we term template-based, and only image files are created. GTL is the language used to define the template for a particular statistical graphic. Behind the scenes, the SGPlot, SGPanel and SGScatter procedures are all using templates defined using GTL. When using each of these procedures, it is possible to generate a text file containing the GTL code which generates the templates for the graph produced. We do this by adding the tmpl out equals option to the proc statement and specifying the text file to create. Here, a .tpl extension has been used only to emphasize the fact that this is a template. Let's look at the GTL code generated for a scatter plot created with proc sgplot. The first thing to note is that the code produced is executable SAS code. Graph templates, like ODS styles, are defined using proc template. It is also worth noting that while the GTL code does reference variable names, it does not reference any dataset names. We will revisit this point later on. The stat graph keyword on the define statement tells proc template that we are going to create a statistical graphic template. What follows is the name of the template created, in this case, sgplot. The template is defined within the define block, which is terminated by an end statement. Within the define block, there is a layout block, and then within the layout block, the statements that specify our plots. This rather straightforward structure is only complicated by the possibility of having nested layout blocks for creating panel displays. In this case, we are creating a simple scatter plot which requires use of the GTL scatter plot statement, the syntax of which is similar to SGPlot scatter statement. The options in this case specify that the plotting variables are used to define the axes of the plot, specify the label to be used in any legend created, and specify a unique name for the plot created by the statement so that it can be referred to in other statements. There are many other options available which control various aspects of the plot, all of which are described in the extensive GTL documentation in the SAS help files. Let's execute this proc template code. The first thing to notice is that no graphical output has been produced. Remember that proc template and the GTL within it are only defining the templates for our graph. By default, user-defined templates are stored in the sasuser.templat template store. So how do we create a graph from this template? The sgRender procedure's purpose in life is to produce graphical output by combining a GTL template with a data source. The only piece of information we are required to provide PROC SGRender is the name of the statistical graphic template that we wish to use. However, 
As noted earlier, the template itself contains no reference to any dataset names. Therefore, we also specify the name of the dataset to use. If we don't, then as with other SAS procedures, the last created dataset is used. We must simply make sure that the variables referenced in the template exist within the input dataset specified. Submitting this code creates our graph. In practice, embedding variable names within the template limits the usefulness of GTL. What if we wanted to find a generic template and then specify the variables to be used later on? This is achieved using dynamic variables in our GTL code. Let's return to the GTL code we used earlier and adapt this so that we can produce a scatter plot of any two numeric variables. The first thing we must do is declare our dynamic variables using the dynamic statement in our GTL, which must appear between the define statement and the first layout statement. In this case, two dynamic variables have been created, xvar and yvar. The dynamic variable names can now be used within the rest of the GTL code. Here, the weight variable name has been replaced with the xvar dynamic variable and height with y bar. Dynamic variables could also have been used to specify option values or legend labels, in fact in many places throughout our GTL code. Having made our template dynamic, we now submit the proc template code to create the new template. Note that the defined statement was also altered so that the template created has the name dynamic scatter. We now return to proc SD render to create our graphs. Again, we specify the name of the template to use and the input dataset name, which is now blood pressure, which contains blood pressure data for a set of patients in a hospital clinic. All that remains is to specify the values of our dynamic variables. This requires the use of ProcSD Render's dynamic statement. We simply name the dynamic variable we wish to assign a value and then, following an equal sign, specify its value. Note that character values even variable names, as in this case, must be enclosed in quotes. Numeric values can also be quoted, but this is not required. Here we set the value of xvar to a variable name systolic and yvar to diastolic. Running this code generates our scatter plot. The template can be reused for another scatter plot simply by changing the values of the dynamic variables in the proc SD render and using an appropriate data source. It is worth stepping back at this point and noting that all of the graphs produced so far using GTL could easily have been generated simply using proc SG plot. In practice, the other SG procedures can be used to generate a plot similar to the one that you want, the GTL exported and then modified. Alternatively, the GTL can be written from scratch. There are a number of features of GTL which we don't have time to cover in detail in this podcast, but are worthy of note and further investigation. For example, it is possible to use SAS macro variables within GTL to play a similar role to dynamic variables. It is possible to perform conditional processing within GTL to allow for different statements to be executed depending on various conditions, and it is also possible to evaluate expressions within GTL using SAS functions as well as special GTL functions. All of these topics are covered in an Amadeus training course, more details of which will be given later. GTL really comes into its own when you want to produce more complicated graphs that cannot be created using the other SG procedures. Say we wish to create a display like this to visualize the distribution of a particular numeric variable using a histogram with fitted distribution lines and a box plot. Neither SGPlot, SGPanel or SGScatter would allow us to do this. However, we can write the GTL code and then create the plots using SGRender. Here is the GTL code which creates the template for this display. Notice the use of dynamic variables to control the variable plotted 
and the title displayed. The rest of the code, while it looks quite involved, is simply nested layout blocks containing the plotting statements to create the graphs. Having created this new template, we can now use ProcSG Render to generate this display for any numeric variable. Here we use the systolic variable in our blood pressure dataset and specify an appropriate title. Running this code generates our new display. SAS 9.3 was released in the summer of 2011. Along with a range of new features for statistical graphic, it brought with it a significant change. Prior to SAS 9.3, use of statistical graphics required a SAS graph license. However, with SAS 9.3, the SG procedures, the graph template language, and LDS graphics have all moved into the base SAS product. As we've seen in this podcast, GTL is very flexible and there is certainly a lot to learn. In the next episode of this podcast series, I will introduce you to the ODS Graphics Designer, a real jewel in the crown of SAS statistical graphics which provides a point and click interface to easily build highly complex statistical graphics templates. In the meantime, if this episode has prompted you to learn more about SAS statistical graphics, then Amadeus are pleased to offer courses and webinars which go into much more detail about the topics introduced in this podcast series. That concludes this presentation. Thank you for taking the time to watch this Amadeus software podcast. We hope you found it useful. Please make sure to check out the rest of this podcast series via our website. We also welcome any comments or suggestions you may have for future tips. Please feel free to contact us via email at info at amadeus.co.uk, by telephone, or by visiting our website at www.amadeus.co.uk. Okay.